This year, I am focused on saving and investing, but I still want to do things like travel. NerdWallet lets you compare top travel credit cards side by side to maximize your spending, some even offering 10 times points on your spending, which means you could end up with a free flight or maybe a better hotel room. So what could future you do with smarter financial decisions? Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. Reminder, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Hello and welcome to Happier, a podcast where we talk about ways to make our lives happier, healthier, more productive, and more creative. This week, we'll talk about why it's a good idea to read a book that sheds light on how things work, and we will talk about one of the easiest and most fun ways to spark creativity, plus, of course, a happiness hack. I'm Gretchen Rubin, a writer who studies happiness, good habits, human nature, the five senses. I'm in my little home office in New York City, and joining me today from Los Angeles, from her much bigger office, is my sister, Elizabeth Kraft. That's me, Elizabeth Kraft, a TV writer and producer living in L.A., and Gretch, my office is messy. You haven't been here for a while, so. You know I can't wait to get my hands on it. It's big, <laughs> it's cluttered. There's so much fun to be had there. But before we jump into this week's Try This at Home, first we have a few updates. Yes, this comes from Lisa, who is a questioner. She says, at the beginning of the school year, my son and I sent in a listener question. My son loves to read and had a reading goal that he wanted to meet and was concerned that socializing during some free time in the morning would impact how much he could read. Just wanted to let you know that he agreed with Gretchen's philosophy of, quote, living things come first. <laughs> he still manages to get plenty of reading in during other pockets of time at school, on the bus, at home, etc. And he's made some really great friendships during this freshman year of high school. I remember this question, Gretchen. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so happy to hear we were helpful. That's really lovely. That was very yes. nice to hear. Happy reading. And happy making friends. We can make yes. time for both, yes. even as a freshman in high school. And Mother's Day is coming up here in the United States. And we have been hearing from people who are looking for good Mother's Day gift ideas. And I have to say, if you're looking for a good gift, my Know Yourself Better Building Connections journal is a really fun way for a mother in your life to share wisdom, family stories, insights, all the things that are most meaningful it's a really fun exercise to do for yourself or with someone else. So check it out, that journal, and then all my other journals at happiercast.com slash journals. Yes, many great Mother's Day gifts on your site. Yes. Now, this week, our Try This at Home suggestion is to read a book that sheds a light on how things work. So, Gretch, explain what you mean by this. Well, Elizabeth, it's occurred to me that you and I both love a certain kind of book, and we've talked about it over the years, and we've swapped examples of books like this, and it really made me think that this is actually a really good try this at home, because these books build our happiness, boost our happiness by shedding a light on our common experiences. And these are the books that really explain how something that is a very familiar part of everyday life, how it works. It's often an insider who reveals all, or it's a journalist who's done a lot of research about how things work. And I just find that over and over, you know, the more we know, the more we notice. When you realize how complicated and hard it is to do even a simple thing, you appreciate it more. And it just makes everyday life so much more interesting when you read one of these. And I feel like they're a very specific category that you couldn't walk into a bookstore and see them categorized together. <laughs> but in my mind, they, they fit very neatly together because they shed a light on how things work. And we've traded these titles over the years. I've read many that you've suggested to me, and you've read many that I've suggested to you. Yes. I love getting the inside, behind the scenes, yes. and the politics of how things work, the mechanics of how they work, Yes, because then I enjoy my everyday life better. Yes. For example, one we both read, Gretchen, is The Secret Life of Groceries, The Dark Miracle of the American Supermarket, 
Well, now I just enjoy going to a grocery store so much more because I feel like I understand the fish counter better. Yes. I understand yes. the trucks arriving. It's just fascinating. Well, a friend of mine actually got a product in a Trader Joe's and I said to her like, I can't believe that's so huge. I can't believe you pulled it off. And she was clearly gratified that I, of all the people that she knew, realized what a triumph this was. Yes. Because having read that book, I realized, wow, there is so much competition for that shelf space. The fact that she's like eked her way in there is just extraordinary. And it's funny, my daughter Eliza was the one who first told me about this book, and I read it and you read it, and I posted on it somewhere on social media. And so many people said, oh, wow, that book sounds fascinating. I want to read it. Much more than most books that I, po <laughs> you know, we post about books all the time. So I think there is this thing where we know that there's so much to everything that we're doing. It's exciting to know more about it. I mean, another great example, and kind of the book that got me thinking about this example was a book called Traffic why we drive the way we do and what it says about it by Tom Vanderbilt. Now, Elizabeth, you and I are not fans of driving, let alone traffic. Yeah. But he, it just is so much more interesting just to be on the highway. I mean, he talks about road rage. He talks about why a roundabout is actually safer than a traffic light. And it's safer because it feels more dangerous. And that's what makes mm. it safer. He talks about changing lanes. He talks about rubbernecking, just all these things. And now I truly feel like even just being stuck in traffic is more interesting because I, I am looking around me and feel like I have a deeper insight into like why things are the way they are. Another one, Gretchen, that we both loved is Heads in Beds, a reckless memoir of hotels, hustles, and so-called hospitality <laughs> by Jacob Tomsky really talks about what it's like to work in a hotel, yes. why things are the way they are in a hotel. Yes. And that was fascinating. And I probably think about it every single time now that I stay at a hotel. Absolutely. And that phrase, heads and beds. Yes. I use that whenever I'm referring to like people's need to like fill something up or like get people to attend. I'm always like, well, we need to get heads and beds. And people look at me like, what are you talking about? But yeah, that was super interesting. I mean, a book that's very different, I would say it's much less every day. It's kind of a transcendent, almost poetic way of looking at everyday life, but oh, something that transformed the way I see yeah. my surroundings is a book that's probably the book that I recommend the most and give away as a present the most, which is a book called A Pattern Language, Towns, Buildings, Construction by Christopher Alexander. I like the part where he talks about homes, but he talks about things like staircase as stage, mm. half wild garden, child cave, sleeping to the east, hidden place, ceilings at different heights. And now I'm like, I walk into a place and I'm like, you know what I like about this place? It has ceilings at different heights. It just makes me see the world in a different way. And that's what I love about this category is you feel like so much is revealed to you. Sarah and I last year went on a cruise because we were yeah. doing research for a development project we were working on. And before we went, I read Cruise Confidential, a hit below the waterline where the crew lives, eats, wars, and parties by Brian <laughs> David Burns. And it enhanced my enjoyment of the cruise so much because mm -hmm. as I was walking around, right. I just felt like I understood how things were working. Yes. And of course, I didn't understand everything, but it gave me right. an insight that just enhanced my pleasure. Yeah, Elizabeth, it's one of my secrets of adulthood. The more we know, the more we notice. And so when you know everything that's going into it, you sort of notice all the, the little patterns and the shortcuts and, and what they're doing. Kind of another way to understand how things work is a fascinating book that I read called Inside of a Dog, What Dogs See, Smell, and Know by Alexander Horowitz. I read this book because I thought about it in terms of the five senses when I was doing my book Life in Five Senses. But what it really showed me is what it's like to be a dog. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I had got it when we first had Barnaby because I think I would have understood his doggy experience mm -hmm. much better. And it's just absolutely fascinating their experience of smell, just why they behave the way they do, you know, how to keep them entertained, what what bothers them. Um, it's just it's just absolutely fascinating. Yeah, side note on a dog, Gretchen, I read recently that for dogs, sniffing during a walk is like checking their emails. So yes. you have to <laughs> allow them to have time to check their emails on the walk. And I just thought that was such a funny uh, description. Right? It's so memorable. Now, I'm right now reading a book which is doing this. Some context here. Elizabeth, you love reality TV. You yes. like The Bachelor. You don't love The Bachelor, right? No, I am a member of Bachelor Nation, for sure. Oh, okay. 
I just hear about the housewives. Tomorrow. Okay, but you're a member of Bachelor Nation. Oh, that's right, because you've read this book. That's right. Well, my daughter Eliza said to me, even though I am not a fan of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, she said, you really need to read this book. And she's been sort of telling me to read it. And, you know, one of my things is a good way to show affection and respect is if somebody recommends something to you, follow up. So I was like, okay, I'm going to read it. It's called How to Win the Bachelor, The Secret to Finding Love and Fame on America's Favorite Reality Show by Chad Kultkin and Lizzie Pace. And I have to say, this book is absolutely fascinating, even though I have literally never watched an episode of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. I did watch one episode of The Golden Bachelor because everybody was talking about it so much that I felt I had, but but that's that seemed very exceptional. Anyway, this book is so fascinating. Now I want to watch it, but it just shows you that when you understand the mechanics and the reasons and the logic and the patterns anything can become interesting. Like they have this vocabulary and this analysis and this timeline of the ages of The Bachelor. And I'm just like, this is so interesting, even though I don't even know what they're talking about. I still find it interesting. Well, and you and I love jargon and books yes. like this yes. always have vocabulary and yes. jargon. And so yes. we love knowing all of that. Yes. Um, but what I think is so interesting about this is that reading these kind of books just builds empathy. Yes. Right. And we're all looking for ways to connect, looking for ways to connect with people who are not in our everyday lives, yes. who we are different from. And I think yes. understanding other people's worlds yes. is a way to kind of build these mental connections so that just a person on the street is somebody that you feel more connected to because, oh, I understand. I see somebody yes. pushing a dolly of something. I understand something about where it came from and, and yes. what this person has been through today. Absolutely. And I just love that. And with that empathy, I think comes respect and gratitude because you realize this person, you understand what they're going through, what's hard, what's challenging. A friend of mine's father said that everybody in their lifetime should work as a short order cook, as a clerk in a retail store, and as a babysitter. Because mm -hmm. he said, if you understand that, you'll have so much more appreciation for all the work that people do around you. I think you're absolutely right. It builds empathy. It builds appreciation, gratitude for everything that people do. And I also think there's sort of a pleasure in becoming a minor expert. We've talked about this mm. many times, and maybe you're a minor expert in like the chocolate shops of Paris or something or Napoleon. But one of the things you can be a minor expert in is sort of like you could do like grocery stores. It's a fascinating world. And you could watch some documentaries, read a few books, and feel like you kind of are a minor expert in something. And there, there's something very satisfying about that. And just an appreciation, thinking about all these books, it just seems like everything is much harder than you think. Yes. The TV show. Like, I know yes. now what goes into a TV show, and I just want to fall down in a faint of exhaustion every time I hear about a new TV show, because I'm like, oh my gosh, I know how hard it was to get that yes. thing on the air. No, it's true. There's nothing is easy. There, nothing no, is easy. Nothing is easy. And it's just fascinating to understand the logic. And I think also we're better able to play our parts nicely if we understand yes. why things are the way they are and how we are inconveniencing people. Maybe there's a rule that doesn't make sense to us, but if we knew why that rule was there, we would understand, okay, this rule does make sense, on and on. Well, let us yes. know if you do try this at home and how reading a book that sheds a light on how things works works for you. What books have you found? We are eager yes. for more books to read in this category. We can't get enough. It is so fun. By the way, all these books were really well written. All the books we listed are actual like page turners, I would oh, say. They'd be like 100%. good gift books. Yes. No, you might think, oh, this makes it sound dry, like you're watching a documentary about them stamping out screws in some kind of metal factory, but they're all really, really good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fascinating. Let us know on Instagram, threads, TikTok, Facebook. Drop us an email at podcast at GretchenRubin.com. Or as always, you can go to the show notes. This is happiercast.com slash 478 for everything related to this episode. And of course, we will have links to all the books we mentioned. Speaking of traffic, Gretch, coming up, we have a uh, driving happiness hack. But first, this break. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making 
making the process easy and intuitive. I know that when I've been hiring, it's really hard to do. It's really hard to find quality candidates. It's really hard to handle the process. Hiring is easy when you have lots of quality candidates, like with LinkedIn Jobs. It's so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Gretchen. That's linkedin.com slash Gretchen to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, Elizabeth, it's time for a happiness hack. And you and I are not fans of driving, so this is a good happiness hack for people like us or for just anyone. Yes, this comes from Andrea. She said, when the pandemic lockdown occurred, I was driving only for essentials or to go outside for recreational activities. Since I had so much more time, I decided to take the scenic route to my destinations by choosing avoid freeways on my navigation app. In addition to greatly improving the scenery, I immediately felt more calm and actually started to enjoy driving. I have kept this pandemic habit and continue to use it whenever I have plenty of time to get to where I am going. Well, Gretch, I will do this if I'm stressed about getting somewhere. I will often do this because I do not like driving on the freeway. And it is sometimes just more pleasant not to be yes. on the freeway. Right. Well, and I just think that this is just a good thing to keep in mind that you can choose to do it a different way. If something's really unpleasant, it's back to this idea of identify the problem. If one of the problems is it's a very, very unpleasant drive, maybe there is a way to make it more pleasant. That's not always possible, but sometimes it is. So I think Andrea's suggestion is a good reminder that that can be an option. Yes. And of course, in L.A., it can be hard because you may be traveling a very far distance. Yes. But if it yeah. works, it works. Yeah. And now for the right way, because of hashtag right 24 and 24, we are talking about the right way. Of course, there is no one right way to write, but it's fun to talk about ideas, strategies, resources, ways that people are going about handling this challenge. It's so fun to hear what people are doing. And Elizabeth, one of the questions that people often ask is, how do you keep yourself creatively stimulated? Like, how do you get ideas? How do you keep your battery charged if you're writing a lot? Like you and I are writing a lot. Mm -hmm. This is something that we have to maintain on a very consistent basis. And anybody, like if you're doing Write 24 and 24, you are also trying to write in a very consistent basis. And we have the same strategy that we use. Yes, and that is that one of the best ways to make yourself want to write is to read. Speaking of reading, Gretch, we have kind of a reading-themed show today. We do have a reading-themed show. Um, yes, this is a great way to give yourself ideas. I mean, I think sometimes people have, a, and I mean, maybe this is true for some people, because I know many people, professional writers, who will say this, like, if I'm working on a project, I don't read anything that's similar to it because I don't want it to interfere with my own thinking and everything. I have to say I'm exactly the opposite. Yeah. I'm like, I go deeper and deeper and deeper into anything that feels even slightly related or slightly in the spirit of, because I find that that actually stimulates my creativity. So reading generally stimulates my creativity and gives me ideas, but also research, which I have a very like wide definition of what counts as research, that also stimulates my creativity. Yeah, well, Gretchen, a perfect example of this is Sarah, my writing partner and co-host of Happier in Hollywood and I, as I've mentioned, are writing a female-centered thriller novel. Mm -hmm. And Which, by the way, sounds great. I cannot wait you. to read this thing. Thank you. I know what it's about. <laughs> 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 so the minute we decided we were going to do that, we both just started consuming books like this. We look for uh -huh. lists of them. I asked AI, like, what are examples <laughs> of this kind of book? And yeah. we have now read dozens of these kinds yeah. of books. In fact, I texted Sarah the other day because I was at Barnes & Noble looking to buy an actual physical book because so often I'm listening to books. Yeah. And I had read most of the thrillers that they had out. Oh. And I said to Sarah, I said, oh, we have gone through a lot of these because yeah. there's many yeah. of these we have already read. For us, it really stimulates our own creativity 
I'm not worried that I'm going to copy somebody else's thriller. It's more that I'm right. living in that world. And so yes. it sets me in the mood to then create yes. that kind of world. Well, and I have the thing where somebody will say something or assert something, and then I'll start thinking, well, do I agree with that? Or how do I see an example of that in my own life? So maybe I do disagree. And so now I have a new point that I want to make, or maybe it jogs my memory of a story or an example that would be really useful for what I'm doing, but that I wouldn't have necessarily been able. You know, sometimes there's something in the deep storage of your brain and you just can't call it up but something that somebody else says unlodges it and so that's yes. what I find and myself and also one of the things that's kind of frustrating about the sort of work that I do is I really don't ever know what is going to give me my big ideas I mean like one of the things that for me like in my own life was a huge revelation and I wrote about it in better than before I've talked about it a lot, is the difference between abstainers and moderators. That for some mm. people with strong temptation, it's easier to be an abstainer than a moderator. And this was something that I consider this to be a huge insight into myself, something very obvious about myself, but I never noticed it until I was reading the appendix, some like extraneous <laughs> back matter in Boswell's Life of Johnson. It wasn't even in Boswell's Life of Johnson. It was in the appendix to Boswell's Life of Johnson. And it just had this anecdote of Samuel Johnson saying, but so somebody offered Dr. Johnson a little wine, and he said, I can't take a little child. Abstinence is as easy to me as temperance would be difficult. Mm. And when I read that, I thought, that's me. Abstinence ah, is easier yes. for me than moderation. But like, I couldn't have looked that up. I couldn't have been like, now I need to have some interesting insights into my nature because I can't look for that. So I'm constantly looking for odd things that just catch my fancy. Like if a book is recommended in a book that I'm reading, I'll often read that book. So I follow this chain or I read a lot of oddball things just because that's what I feel like sparks my creativity. Yes. And it makes you then want to write. Yes. It makes you want to put your own pen to paper and write. Well, this is like, I read this book, which just blew my mind by Adrienne Kennedy called People Who Led to My Plays. She's a very renowned playwright. And she said, people always said to her, like, how did you get your ideas for your plays? And she's like, okay, I'll write a book called People Who Led to My Plays. It's a very unusual format. It's a book that I was like, I wish this book had been 10 times longer. I could have just kept reading and reading and reading this book. And then it made me want to write that kind of book myself, which I have not done. But it's the kind of thing where if I was creatively stuck, this might have been something where it's like, oh, there's a real idea here. Like, why is this feel so engaging and so alive and so fresh? as an approach. And so reading that sparked that creativity. Yeah, more reading for everybody, Greg. Absolutely. Oh, and here's a hack. If you're feeling restless and you're finding it hard to sort of sit down and read, I have found that having a little life, um, a little movement makes it easier to sit and read. I don't know why, but if I have like, there's like a fire burning in a fireplace or there's a candle or my dog is curled up beside me or like the TV is on to something boring, but it's on mute, but it's just sort of on for some reason. Maybe it's the five senses that somehow my five senses mm. feel engaged or something, but I find that it's much easier to read when I incorporate that, just like that little life in the room with me. I, it's odd. I totally agree, Gretch. I, all uh, those things help. Or maybe reading outside, you know, there's something about like the wind and the trees. Yes. I don't know. It's interesting. Oh, and by the way, Alyssa, on our reading theme, my book, Life in Five Senses, is out. The paperback is coming out soon. There is a discussion guide. If you were talking about it in a book club, a lot of book clubs like to have discussion guides. So that's at GretchenRubin.com slash resources. You can get that for free. And here's something new that I've never done before. If you are part of a book club that is reading Life in Five Senses, the paperback or the hardback, you can enter your book club for a chance to win a virtual drop-in from me. People sometimes ask me if I could just sort of stop by virtually with the book club. I've never really done that before, but for the paperback, I thought, I'll try something new so I can stop by your book club if you're interested. Fun. We'll draw some names. And again, if you want to join that, it's at halfyearcast.com slash book club. Excellent. That'll be really fun. And on the subject of the five senses, for fun with the five senses, Elizabeth, I have a fun question for you, okay. I think. And this was inspired, you know, I went on a silent meditation retreat, and they talked about the five hindrances of meditation. And the five hindrances are desire, aversion, restlessness, doubt, and sleepiness. Mm. Sometimes these are translated differently. And one of the leaders asked a question that I thought was very interesting. So I'm going to pose it to you, Elizabeth, which is, does your sleep feel heavy or light? 
I thought this was such an interesting question. My sleep is definitely light. I'm uh-huh. one of those people where I yeah. can be instantly awake. A door opens. I'm instantly wide awake like Jack. Is something wrong? Yeah. I am that way. The only time where I really have heavy sleep, Gretchen, is mm. when I nap. And I think that's probably part oh. of why I love napping, especially if oh. I'm napping on a couch. Oh, instead of in a bed? <laughs> That is my absolute heaviest sleep. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Um, that is I don't know what it is, but it's true. Do you think it's related to motherhood that you're like alert for Jack, or do you think you're just generally light sleeper? I've always been that way. I've always been a light sleeper. So I'm sure motherhood continues it, but I, I think I will be my whole life. Mm. It's interesting that you're a mix. Maybe a lot of people are a mix, but you're mostly a light sleeper. I'm a heavy sleeper. I sleep really well. I can also fall asleep pretty easily at night if Jamie is still awake and he's got the TV on or he's got his reading light. I can probably fall asleep even if like the regular light is on, but he does use a reading light because that's just more pleasant. But I would describe most of my sleep as heavy. Even when I nap for just 25 minutes, it doesn't feel that deep. But on the other hand, I'm like, I was down pretty deep. So are you groggy when you, if someone comes and wakes you up in the middle of the night, are you groggy? Usually not because I think if somebody wakes me up in the middle of the night, usually there's like adrenaline and I'm right, wide awake. Right. Like I do wake up quickly. But if you were just shaking me and being like, hey, you're hogging the covers, right. I think I would be very groggy. Yeah. If it weren't like, oh my gosh, jump out of bed and grab your glasses and deal with it. But that's, it's an interesting question. Now, I'm, you know, I think, is your sleep heavy or light? Yes, I'm going to pay more, even more attention. All right, coming up, Gretch, I give myself an appointment to marriage. But first, this break. We all know that our life and our health can be improved when we eat nourishing, healthy meals, but it can be hard to maintain. With Sunbasket Meal Kits, it's easy because they take care of the details. Sunbasket offers 18 chef-crafted, dietitian approved recipes each week with options like Mediterranean, carb-conscious, vegetarian, and keto-friendly. The recipes are quick and easy to follow, and you can enjoy a meal full of organic produce and clean ingredients that's ready in 30 minutes or less. Try mouth-watering sun basket dishes like salmon burgers with lemon dill mayo and seared squash or steaks with chimichurri and harissa roasted sweet potatoes. My son Jack loves salmon and he loves the sun basket salmon burgers. Go to sunbasket.com forward slash happier today to get $45 off your first order. That's sunbasket.com forward slash happier to get $45 off your first box plus free shipping. Cruise in style in a Toyota Camry. With available all-wheel drive and multiple driving modes, you can accomplish anything. Experience cutting-edge available tech, like a multimedia touchscreen and wireless connectivity, complemented by the reliability of Toyota Safety Sense. It's no wonder the Camry has been the best-selling car in America for over two decades. Or check out a new Corolla and define your style with a model for everyone, from the sleek and affordable sedan to the super-efficient hybrid and the hip and agile hatchback, there's a Corolla made just for you. Toyota has even introduced their spacious Corolla Cross as a hybrid for when your adventure calls for both maximum capacity and efficiency. And right now, your local Toyota dealer has vehicles in stock and is making delivery on new vehicles almost every day. So don't wait. Buy a new Camry, Corolla, or Corolla Cross today. Visit buyatoyota.com for deals, details, and more. Toyota, let's go places. We're so excited to introduce you to Great Jones. Great Jones makes high-quality, thoughtfully designed cookware that's so stunning, you won't want to put it away. They have everything from Dutch ovens to ceramic dishes to non-stick sheet pans. They've got everything you want. I have the Saucy, which is a terrific saucepan. It has curved sides. It has a pouring spout. It has a lid. And it looks so elegant. It's really a pleasure just to look at it on the counter, even before we're using it. Yes, I love all the colors. Yeah. They make stunning gifts that are actually useful. Weddings, housewarming parties, birthdays. It's the perfect gift for the foodie in your life. 
So upgrade your kitchen and replace those old rusted hand-me-downs with bold, beautiful, long-lasting pieces from Great Jones. Get started today at greatjones.com and get an extra 15% off your first order with promo code HAPPIER. That's greatjones.com, promo code HAPPIER. Okay, listen, it's time for demerits and gold stars. What is your demerit? All right, Gretch. Well, this is one of those demerits that follows a gold star. So a while uh, ago, okay. I gave myself a gold star for being all up to date on my doctor's appointments. I remember that. That you know, was a glorious I, I moment. I had every test. I had every appointment, the eye doctor, uh, colonoscopy, all of it. And now, Gretch, I'm behind. Mm -hmm. I'm behind on my doctor's appointments. I know we all get in this spot, but I finally called to make an appointment for an annual. And I said, I think I might be late. And they looked and they said, oh, yes, we sent you a notice in September that it was time for your appointment. So I said, oops. Mm, I've heard worse. I've heard worse. True. And because I'm a type 1 diabetic, I yeah. have to go to the eye doctor every year. I need to go to a glaucoma specialist. I need, you know, mm -hmm. there are all these things right. I need to do that other people Specialties. may not need to do. Very important that I keep up with it. And I am behind. So I am digging my way out of this doctor's appointment hole. But it's just, you know, it's a drag. But I'm lucky that I have access to such great health care and I should just turn it into a positive. Right. And you've got insurance. But, yeah. Yes. But it it's a thing. Well, it's, you know, we talked about a treadmill days and finish line days. I mean, this is just something like the minute that you're done, it feels like it's time to start it over yes, again. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The cycle of appointments. Life is a series of appointments. <laughs> I feel like there's a t-shirt there or, yes. or a mug. <laughs> yes, there's always yes. a mug. By giving yourself a demerit, that's how you stay on course. That's why we do yes. it. Not to be harsh on ourselves. It's just to remind ourselves of what really does make us happier, healthier, more productive, and more creative in the long run. So that's why we do it. Yep. So good luck. Thank you. How about you, Gretch? What's your gold star today? Well, I want to give a gold star to my husband, Jamie, because he calls just to sort of check in throughout the day. And I have to say this took me a long time. I mean, many, 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 many years to get used to because I was always like, why are you calling for no reason? Like, it's just, oh, I'm just <laughs> calling to check in. And this is something I will say that his whole family does. And I remember one time, Jamie and I were living in Washington, D.C. His parents were in New York City, and we were going to take the shuttle and come see them in New York City. And I mean, there were like 14 phone calls when are you coming? Are you coming? Did you change your plans? How's it going? Are you on your way? What flight? When are you landing? And I was just like, our plans are exactly what they were. The first time we told you we are executing on that plan. We will be there as indicated, you know. And then I just realized, finally, it dawned on me, this is just a way to stay connected. This is just a right. bid for attention. This is just a little way. And I love it. And I should feel so fortunate. And instead of feeling like, oh, why is he calling if he doesn't have a reason to call, I should just lose this pointless emphasis on efficiency and say, you know, we talk about frequency is more important than duration with visits. And it is just these little touch points, just the fact that he's calling to just be like, okay, what's up? What are you doing? Okay, not much. All right, I'll, t I'll talk to you later. You know, what time are you going to be home? Okay. It's like, that's nice. That's so nice. It's so nice. And that's the fact so is, the nice. minute I stopped and thought about it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so nice. And instead, I'd always been sort of not, you know, not grumbling, but just been like, oh yeah, it's the, you know, it's a Reuben thing. Like they just have to call yeah. all the time. And it's like, why am I rolling my eyes? I'm lucky. Yes. This is nice. Yes. Gold star. So now star. I'm much more appreciative of it. Yes. Gold star to Jamie. And all the Rubens with all their phone calls. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> The resource for this week. Remember the five senses quiz, the what's your most neglected sense quiz. It will help you to identify your most neglected sense. And when you do that, you can find a new source of comfort, calm, and creativity. It will also tell you your most appreciated sense, which you might have a better sense of what that is, but some people are surprised. You can take the quiz at happiercast.com slash quiz. It is so fun to hear what people make of their results. Hit me up if it's interesting to you or you're doing something interesting with that information. And I want to remind everybody that April 18th, one year anniversary of Life in Five Senses, hard to believe. The paperback is coming out April 30th. 
And Elizabeth, you once gave me a, a mug that said, pre-order early and often, and I am drinking from that mug to inspire <laughs> everyone silently to pre-order their copy of the paperback of Life in Five Senses. Manifest. Um, and speaking of reading, we've been speaking a lot of reading in this episode. Now we're going to talk even more about reading with what are we reading? Elizabeth, what are you reading? I am reading Emma by Jane Austen. And in addition to How to Win the Bachelor, I am also reading Old God's Time by Sebastian Barry. I highly recommend them both. And that's it for this episode of Happier. Remember to try this at home. Read a book that sheds a light on how things work. Let us know if you tried it and if it worked for you. Thank you to our executive producer, Chuck Reed, and everyone at Odyssey. Get in touch. Gretchen's on Instagram, Threads, Facebook, and TikTok at Gretchen Rubin. And I'm on Instagram and Threads at Liz Craft. And you know what people read? They read the reviews and ratings of a show. So <laughs> if you like the show, please be sure to rate and review our show. That is how people discover the podcast. Until next week, I'm Elizabeth Craft. And I'm Gretchen Rubin. Thanks for joining us. Onward and upward. So, Elizabeth, now I really want to watch The Bachelor, but there's so much to choose from. You and Eliza need to put your heads together and tell me, like, what is the most iconic or definitive mm. or famous season? Or maybe I should just watch what's most recent. Or should I watch the first one? I don't know. Where should I jump in? Yeah, definitely not the first one because it's changed so much. But what yeah. we'll have to do is figure out who are some of our favorite bachelors or bachelorettes. Yes. You can also watch yeah. The Bachelorette. And how Bachelor in Paradise fits into this, I need you to explain <laughs> that to me too. It's like, I need to figure this whole thing out. It's a world. From the Onward Project. I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for ways for my son to get involved and give back in our local community. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Student Visionaries of the Year, a campaign by Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, the largest nonprofit organization dedicated to creating a world without blood cancers. Student Visionaries of the Year is a seven-week philanthropic leadership development program for high school students. Participants form strong teams and fundraise in honor of a pediatric blood cancer survivor in their local community. This program is transformative. It not only helps students develop valuable life skills like project management, communication, financial literacy, and entrepreneurship, not to mention it looks great on college applications, but most importantly, is also a chance for them to engage in meaningful work within their community and make a real impact on blood cancer patients and their families. You can learn more about Student Visionaries of the Year or even nominate a student at lls.org students. That's lls.org students.